it's just gone half six, 28th of September. Christ, where did September go? But it's only just daylight. Uh, I've just sat up early. I want to have an hour before the lads come into work. I want to get this finished. It's all his grain pusher. And he's busy drilling. Well, it's been in here since we started harvest, to be fair. We didn't really need it this harvest because I don't know how we yields, I'll admit. We had no records this year. It's uh, when I speak to people, I hear mis mixed opinions. A lot of people say they've had a well, good harvest, and you know, uh, but there's a lot more. I think, like me, what say it's only been sort of mediocre. You know, our winter barley did very well. Oilseed rape did better than we thought. Wheats were very mixed. I mean, we had some really heavy yielding ones, up to four tons. And then we had some bloody crap ones, you know, like two and a half, threes, you know, which is pretty disappointing and pricing, well, price is okay, but um, costs have gone up and it's just a bit hard work. You don't, you want to make out every acre count, don't you? But, uh, so yeah, spring barley, oh God, spring barley, I don't want to talk about it. We had two fields at Burnby, what only did a tonne. We had the, the field, what was drilled fairly early with the um, oh, harsh avatar, that did really well. And uh, anybody drill their spring barley in September had a good do. That late drill stuff after that wet spell in, in, uh, in March did bloody crap. It did on this farm anyway. So, And I've heard air tell from a lot of other people that their spring barley drill late was poor. So yeah, yeah, we just cobbled this. Yeah, as I say, I'm being really optimistic. We're going to need this next year to shove it up, you know, pile of eye like. Uh, whether it'll materialise, I don't know. But uh, yeah, all these sort of start. Well, it's been a joint project. We've all had a go at it, really. But as I say, it's been in here since before harvest. So yeah, steel is off hard power as we've brought. And there are other bits and pieces of steel. Um, it was a bloody hard... Well, it didn't... Uh, it isn't a manor to headstock, it's off of uh, New Holland, I think, but this part's same, but the holes are in wrong place, so we just have to, after we've welded it all together, uh, get it on and, uh, and weld the locking pin holes in the right position, uh, and uh, mag drill the holes out for, uh, in the right place for our machine. Um, but yeah. Oh, and a, an odd John Deere tra tractor, I think it was an 8400T track. Uh, we've cut a piece out of that and put it on front, so... Because we're going to use it for grain and sh fodder bait. We just want to shove fodder bait a bit higher than probably we'll tip it. Um, so, but uh, yeah, if anybody wants a bit of track to do similar, or for a, another project, I've got a, a bit bits of track, you know. Yeah, he's made a good job of it because he's done most of it to be honest. I'm just finishing it off because he's off drilling as soon as he comes. But uh, we've just done it with our hard MIG, wel MIG welder. We're only single phase here. And yeah, it's what, it was the biggest MIG welder I could buy about 15 years ago. But I think the MIG welders now, they're up to 300 amp, you know. And different sorts of power source as well. They've progressed. So there are a lot more you can weld bigger stuff. Well, with this, with real heavy thick plate, um, you either, well I grind, obviously grind the grooves and sometimes slit it, you know it's slitting this to bite in um, if you're doing really heavy stuff and we've even been known to heat it up with gas bottles first before we weld it so the heat's there to start with before so that doesn't have to put the heat in if you know what I mean because it's not all about doing pretty wells, you know Sometimes the prettiest weld isn't the strongest weld. You know, it's a, ma it's, it's a matter of the heat biting into that steel, you know, moulding molding it all together. You know, you can, you can put a weld on, the prettiest weld, and it breaks and it hasn't even keyed into it, so it has to key into it. I mean, when I was, uh, I learned to weld, and young lads should do this. I mean, I've pointed our ollie into the right direction. And, uh, but I went to college just to learn the basics of what to do, your angles, you know, just simple basics. And then, to be fair, practice makes, well, I won't, no, I'm not perfect, but practice makes better than, not perfect, but practice makes you better, you know. Um, 
Um, and yeah, a fella called Rex Crabs he was, and we, we, we went on a night class, a gang of us, a gang of farm lads around here, to a night club, uh, a night class at uh, Bubwith, there used to be a Bubwith College. And uh, yeah, he just put us in the right direction, real decent bloke. I wonder if he's still alive, it's a long while ago. Christ, I might have only been in our late teens. And uh, yeah, he, he just saw me, and things he's taught me still sticks in my head. You know, um, so yeah, very good. Just off down to my dad's to feed, uh, to put a bale of silage in cows. But the top bale actually isn't silage. It's some, um, we had some spring barley, what was like two crops in one. And the, some of the, half the straw was as green as grass. And uh, so I've decided to wrap 20 and see what feed, what the feed would be like as uh, as feed. So I don't know. We'll uh, we'll see. It'll either be crap or really good. But I think if it if it is somewhat like, maybe in future put a bit of additive on it and uh, and bale 50 or 100. You know, as we get more stock on the farm. That plan is in maybe, I don't know, five, ten years, five years time, maybe to have 60 Hereford cows. As long as everything pans out how I think it's gonna. Don't know. Seems fairly. It smells like a bit like silage, to be fair. It smells really good. I what cow think of it. bring them a, a bale of silage they really woof at it really go at it but it smells quite nice I mean, it's only barely straw there won't be a massive amount of feed value in it but we'll see time will tell if they eat it as much as if, if they eat it as quick as uh, the wood a bale of silage, I don't know where the rest of the gang is, they're all buggering off that way, which is an indication. Well, they're in, in yeah, but uh, buggering off that way is an indication they aren't that king. Time will tell. Put these cover crops in next door, and idea is, I don't know whether before carving, well, probably, we'll bring the cattle out with their calves real early and put them on this real high sand on these cover crops and maybe strip graze them with their calves. Um, they won't, you know, they're hardy of these things so they won't need no shelter. How they're coming now. It's as though they went for them, you know. It's as though they went to get their mates out at shed. They're all coming back now. It's drilled really well as long as 
As long as I haven't paddled it that bad that uh, roller wheelings will show. Nice to have Maya, what are you doing next year? Well, it was about 10 foot up in air. Putting 300 litres on. I want it to go up to 4 but it's just a bit extreme. You know, getting out done with a, a 3,000 litre tank. You're carrying 6,000 litres, fair enough, but I've, I've compromised at 300 litres to put my residual chemical on and uh, these jets are firing it. God almighty, I don't know where it's going field, all these bulls. Uh, jets are... Jets are uh, firing it forward and back, so you should be covering everything. That's the plan anyway. Got a bit of research going on in this field, I can't really say too much, but I got approached by a lad I know, mate of man, who works for a company and said, will you do us a little bit of a trial? So I have to do a little bit of a the trial area because it is a terrible grass, it's got a terrible grass weed problem as this field. And uh, yeah, it's, anyway, I can't really say anything wrong. I'm swan to secrecy. 